Last time we improvised together, we were improvising on F sharp natural minor. Because that seventh being the way it is makes things a little bit ambiguous, which served our purposes pretty well. Because this improv is called Water's Edge, and a lot of times when people stand at the edge of the water, they're staring, they're reflecting on their feelings, and in this piece we're doing the same thing. Our feelings are not always black and white, they can't always fit inside that box, and so putting this in natural minor helps give us a little bit more avenue to complex sounds, just like our feelings can be complex. I'm going to show you the part that I played last time, and show you how to do it. You're going to play this pattern. We might play that again before we go on to this very similar vacation. Alright, now you may have noticed that all my left hand really was doing was stepping down, even when it went to the vacation. So this is what you're going to do for the pattern in the bass line. You're just going to play a broken interval for F sharp minor. And we're keeping it kind of an open interval, so not too close. And then we're going to move to C sharp minor with E on bottom. And then we're going to move down again a step to D major and stretch it out a little bit. Now what the right hand is doing, it's following these chords as well and just playing chord tones on the beat. So for F sharp minor, just rocking back on A, C sharp A. For C sharp minor with E on bottom, rocking back on the fifth and the first. And then for D major, starts on the median, the third, goes up to the fifth. Now here I step up, because I'm thinking ahead to repeating F sharp minor. So I'm just stepping up to A to go back to where I started from. You don't have to do the exact same thing that I did, but the general idea is chord tones in the right hand on the beats. Let's put this together. One, two, three. F sharp, C sharp. repeat that. F sharp minor, C sharp minor, D major. Now to go to that very similar vacation, our left hand is just going to step down again to start on C sharp minor and doing an open interval again. So not a third or a second or even a fourth, I'm starting on a fifth. And then it's going to step down to B minor. And that's going to step down to A major and stretch it out. Because <clears throat> like D major, it's the end of its pattern. What the right hand's doing is the same idea, chord tones on the beat. So when I'm in C sharp, and then I step down to B minor, notice my right hand is moving along with my left hand to just place my right hand in root position chords on whatever my next chord is. Because I'm trained for my 1, 3, and 5 to find chord tones, that just makes it automatic. Let's put that vacation together, so starting on C sharp minor. 1, 2, 3. And then you'd probably repeat that again. Let's go ahead and put the pattern, starting on F sharp minor, and the vacation starting on C-sharp minor, together. Let's do the pattern twice and the vacation twice. One, two, F-sharp minor. C-sharp minor. D major. Now let's repeat that. F-sharp minor. C-sharp minor. D major. Now the vacation, C-sharp. B minor, A major, vacation again, C sharp minor, 
B minor, down to A major. Now, you can do a few other ideas um, with the right hand. You don't have to stick to just doing chord tones on the beat. If my left hand is doing this, it's really providing enough of a bass line for a foundation, chord progression-wise. So my right hand can be freed up too. Make some melodies instead of just doing chord tones. Um, another idea, if you do want to go back to the chord tones and you want kind of something transitionary, you can play around in the right hand with uh, split chords. You can change that top note. Like it would be a bigger change, but it's actually pretty subtle doing something like this. Versus this. And here's the new idea again. All I've done is put it in 4-4, four, four. and it just sounds stretched out. But those are some ways that you can change it up as you continue improvising on Water's Edge.